given the fact that my advice, if you're a Bitcoin maximalist or a Bitcoiner is, you shouldn't be investing in anything other than the Bitcoin, <laughs> right? Like, right? I mean, Bitcoin is, it, you've got an answer. There's one winner. Everybody else is a loser, right? And so the question is, are they going to lose big or lose small? And if you came to me and said, oh, I'm, I'm going to find a, a strategy to short the bond market, I would say, I don't suggest that either. You might lose your shirt. So I, I don't know how to short, or I don't know it's very wise to be shorting most of these things. Bitcoin Zella stands out with its simplicity and clarity. We've crafted an experience that anyone can dive into, whether you're a crypto expert or just a new to the crypto world. Now guess who keeps his eye on us? The author of best-selling book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki. And we want to take this opportunity and thank all the people who trusted us and we read every comment and the best part, it's free. Subscribing now means you will get all new information for free. Don't just follow the trends, stay ahead of them. Subscribe to Bitcoin Zella today and enjoy the new edge. Michael Saylor has now been in Bitcoin for a full four-year cycle. He joins us to celebrate, reminisce, and project how Bitcoin will evolve in the next 20 years. The takeaway from this is that Bitcoin can win and, and the world doesn't necessarily have to turn upside down. Right, but when Bitcoin is the global monetary asset or the global monetary index, it still may not be as big as equity capital. It's just going to become much, much more material than gold and much more useful than gold. And, uh, you know, the dynamic between all the rest, it's a function of, you know, uh, are states running deficits or not and how do they handle their issues? And and this is a, this is an optimistic forecast, if you... You know, if you come up with a, pes a pessimistic forecast is is the only thing that's left is Bitcoin, right? <laughs> the world government works, you know, all these governments work through a bunch of issues and they try to, they eventually figure out how to m not make things much worse. And then, and then technology advances and we get humanoid robots and we get AIs that actually do useful thinking. And then we figure out how to, you know, unleash you know, the power of 100 million AI to make the world a better place. And there'll probably be companies that make a fortune, the, the next Facebook, the next Google, the next whatever, and their equity market caps will be quite high. And uh, meanwhile, capital will be created by human productivity. And a lot of that capital will flow into Bitcoin because that because Bitcoin's digital capital if Apple makes $500 billion in selling the iPhone and then they pour the $500 billion back into buying their own stock, right there, they're kind of, they're, they're, they're kind of supporting uh, Apple as a long-term store of value capital asset by pouring their $500 billion into Apple stock. So, I, I mean, I think we'll see that. Now, that, that, the, the conventional view of capital is I pour all of my cash flows into buying my own stock back. And that's what Meta's doing right now. And that's what Apple's doing right now. And other companies do some of that. The, the unconventional view is I take my cash flows and I buy Bitcoin. Right. And so if the world goes completely rational, digital, then we will demonetize equities faster. Right. Like, and, if, and if the world stays very conventional, we will um, continue to monetize equities and real estate to a greater degree, right? And 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 sovereign debt and and bonds, right? I I think sovereign debt, real estate, and equity are conventional capital assets for corporations and big institutions and the like. And Bitcoin is the is the twenty first century novel capital asset. Bitcoin surged eight point two percent over the seven days leading up to September twenty five from $59,886 to $64,816, but the $64,500 resistance level proved more challenging than expected. Weak macroeconomic data contributed to a decreased risk appetite among investors, but other factors also contributed to sparking a Bitcoin price correction on September 25. According to Yahoo Finance, the median new home sales price in the United States fell 4.6% year-over-year in August, following the fastest price increases since early 2022. Home prices have now declined for seven consecutive months, 
marking the longest stretch of declines since 2009. Notably, housing inventory remains near record highs, with 467,000 completed homes currently available for sale. Another point of concern for global investors stems from China, where the central bank announced interest rate cuts and introduced a $142 billion credit line for individuals and businesses. Analysts at Nomura commented in a note that these measures are not enough to arrest the worsening economic slowdown, adding that fiscal measures should take the front seat, though they consider such steps unlikely to materialize, according to Yahoo Finance. On September 24, after the U.S. market closed, Berkshire Hathaway, led by Warren Buffett, announced further reductions in its stake in Bank of America, as its total sales reached $8.9 billion over less than three months. This move has heightened concerns in financial markets as the S&P 500 hit an all-time high on September 25. Bitcoin traders are wary that a potential correction in the stock market could negatively impact cryptocurrency performance. And the interesting question, right, is at what rate does Google decide that they're going to start to buy Bitcoin with cash flow instead of buying treasury bills with cash flow? And, you know, and, and, and or, you know, if I generate a billion dollars a month and I'm a big tech company, I can buy treasury bills, probably U.S. treasury short dated. Or I can buy my stock back, or I can buy Bitcoin. And as a practical matter, I don't really think there's that much else you could do. Oh, you could dividend out your cash flow, right? And so, the, I mean, those are really your choices uh, for the most part, and that's what that's what the big tech companies do. So the interesting question is, at what rate do I go from? Uh, buying my stock back where I'm basically capitalizing my equity? Or do I buy the treasury bill, which is capitalizing sovereign debt? Or do I go to buy Bitcoin, which is digital capital, capitalizing in Bitcoin? And that's a, a regulatory issue and that to a certain degree. And that's also an issue of corporate finance doctrine. Like when will business schools start to teach CFOs that they should take all of their cash flows and buy Bitcoin with them or half their cash flows and buy Bitcoin with them. And uh, if that changes, then Bitcoin monetizes much faster. And if we're, you know, if we're traditionalists, right? Like uh, right now, um, the big bulge bracket banks, they can't custody Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin or sell Bitcoin. So that's a huge impediment to Microsoft, Google, Apple, Amazon adopting Bitcoin as their capital asset, right? They're probably, you're not going to see mega conservative corps do that until they can wire a billion dollars a month to Citi or Bank of America or JP Morgan and, uh, and just have it converted and held in a capital account. So when that happens, when SAB 121 gets repealed or when there's a when there's support for banking Bitcoin in the traditional banking system, I think that accelerates the um, uh, the monetization of uh, Bitcoin and it accelerates the demonetization of equity and debt. In addition to concerns about a global economic downturn, Bitcoin investors are also closely watching the upcoming U.S. presidential election with a focus on Democratic Party candidate Vice President Kamala Harris. Alex Fanovic, CEO of blockchain analytics platform Manson, remarked that the Democrats have created a relatively hostile environment for crypto. He anticipates that a Harris presidency would likely continue the current administration's crypto policies, which are viewed as less supportive of the industry's development in the U.S. Some Bitcoin bulls are hoping Republican Party candidate and former President Donald Trump wins the election. As part of his campaign, Trump has advocated for Bitcoin miners and even spoke at the Bitcoin 2024 conference in Nashville, Tennessee. Recently, Trump was spotted in a New York City bar and restaurant, known for accepting Bitcoin, where he gave out burgers bought with BTC. With the U.S. election outcome still too close to call, Bitcoin traders are adopting a cautious stance as the BTC price approaches its highest levels since August. This sentiment is reflected in the subdued behavior of traders using leverage. According to the futures premium, Bitcoin derivatives primary metric, 
there has been a lack of enthusiasm for betting on further price increases in recent weeks. Due to the longer settlement period, monthly contracts should trade at a 5% to 10% annualized premium under typical market conditions. Any figure below this range is often considered bearish, as crypto traders tend to be optimistic by nature. Since September 2, the Bitcoin futures premium has hovered around a neutral 6%, indicating a lack of conviction among bulls. On July 30, the BTC futures premium surged to 11% following a 25% price rally over three weeks. This suggests that despite Bitcoin's 20% gains between September 6 and September 24, sentiment in the derivatives market has remained flat. For the time being, Bitcoin's underwhelming performance on September 25 can be attributed to weak macroeconomic data, fears of a stock market correction and uncertainty surrounding the impact of the U.S. presidential election on the cryptocurrency landscape. And do not forget to subscribe to Bitcoin Seller. The most important news will reach your inbox on a daily basis and for free. I do not know why you have not subscribed yet. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more daily updates. Remember, knowledge is power, and we're here to empower you on your financial journey. Until next time, happy investing!